This laptop I'm looking at today is one of those punts that I've taken, one of those risks I thought, this looks like it could be interesting, and there's many things that are good about it. It's got a very odd name, it's called the My Ben Ben Xiaomi 6. Yes, what a bad name, it is a shocker. So what we have here is a Celeron N4100 laptop that comes with 8GB of RAM, it has a 256 gigabyte SSD and wireless AC. 15.6 inch screen with a metal lid on the top and a plastic palm rest. So it doesn't really seem that interesting and out of the ordinary from the budget tech I review. But I wouldn't classify this one quite as budget because it sells for about 599. So what sets it apart and why I was interested in reviewing this one and why I got it is because it has upgrade ability. So you've got two RAM slots. So you can, what you'll see later on in this video, is I decided to add another eight gigabytes of RAM. And it also has a replaceable wireless card and you can add a 2.5 inch SSD. But the main feature of this laptop here is it has a dedicated NVIDIA MX150 with two gigabytes of double data rate five RAM, which has moderate performance but paired up with the CPU is going to be a little bit limited. In the box you will find our power supply which is rated to 19 volts, 3.4 amps, and it has that Mickey Mouse style connector on the end. We also get a keyboard protector as well included, which fits it perfectly because it's coming from the manufacturer and it's a first that I've seen this included. On the left side of the laptop you've got DC in, HDMI 2.0a, so that's 4K 60 hertz, two USB 3 ports, a Type-C port which is also USB 3 spec. On the right a Kensington lock slot, an SD card reader which is only USB 2 spec, a USB 2 port, 3.5mm headphone jack with mic support, and lastly an LED. So this is red when charging, green once fully charged, which takes just under two hours. Taking a look at the internals now, so we have a reasonably good layout here, the build quality looks good, there is an internal metal frame that everything is screwed into. So we've got a 41 watt hour battery right here, we have a replaceable mini PCIe card, that's your wireless, right now it has an Intel 9460 that's in there, and look at this, upgradable RAM. So it comes with 8 gigabytes installed, it'll be running in single channel of course, it's a data RAM, so it's a reasonable brand of RAM. But I'm going to upgrade it here because I believe a lot of people will probably actually do this. Running 16 will make things a little bit smoother. There's also a 2.5 inch SATA 3 bay here which is great. So you can install a 1 terabyte hard drive or another SSD. The connectors right here, they've just taped it inside. So if you hear something rattling around, that's what it is. And right under this ribbon cable right here, we have a 2280 SATA 3 SSD. It's 256 gigabytes. So you're able to replace and upgrade that if you wanted to. And for cooling we have a single fan here with two copper thermal transfer pipes. So the GPU will be right here, that's the MX150 and then that N4100, the quad core. So that chipset does not generate a lot of heat, so the fans aren't going to be on often, but when you're gaming or using the GPU with the switchable graphics, that's when the fan will come on, when you do something demanding. As you can see here, the laptop powered up just fine. It took a little bit longer to boot because the BIOS had to detect the new 8GB of installed RAM, which it has here. So you can see it, it's running Windows 10 Home. It just went straight into the desktop, so it's already been set up by someone. So I would be careful doing a factory reset on this model, as it could end up with everything back in Chinese, which it might have originally had. So they have partitioned that 256 gigabyte drive with a Windows installation of 80 gigabytes and then the rest of the space for your data. And in the device manager, I just wanted to quickly point out, so there we have our dual graphics here, so it has switchable graphics between the GeForce MX150 and then the Ultra HD Graphics 600, that's the Intel one, uh, which of course uses a lot less power. It'll be on that by the default, but you can override it and you always use the more powerful GPU if you want. So our display is a 1080p display, it is matte coated, and it has a very poor maximum brightness. I measured just 98 lux, so it doesn't even scrape 100 lux. Inside it looks fine, you'll be running it at 100%, maybe 50%, but if you're going to be using this in very bright lit environments, I mean I do have some powerful studio lighting on at the moment, because of the anti-glare coating, it makes it a little bit better, but it's not amazing. So we have an sRGB rating here of 63%, 
uh, NTSC is only 45%, Adobe RGB 47. So this is not a screen you want to be using for color grading work. So I was going to screen capture this one, but I thought I would show you the screen since it's not flickering on camera or anything to give you an idea of what kind of performance you can expect out of this hardware. So it's got a very weak CPU. We know this, but it is running at 10 watts and aided by the fact that I'm running dual channel and the extra eight gigabytes of RAM, things are very quick and snappy. So I just loaded up a couple of random tabs here and they all popped in very quick. This really does feel a lot like a more modern Core i3 or an older, say, fourth or fifth generation Core i5. So I'll go back into Chrome right here. I'm just going to type in dogs and I have never searched this before. And I'm just going to randomly start opening up tabs and just to demonstrate how fast this is working. So the wireless is that uh, Intel chip that's in there. It's a lot better than the 3165, the 9642. Uh, in my file transfer test, I managed to get close to 400 megabits throughput on that one. So you can see those tabs are loading in and really that is pretty quick overall that performance. It feels good, it feels snappy, and really it does not feel like a low-end Sauron when you're doing light tasks like this. Now you can do a bit of multitasking, which I am doing. Because I've got the extra RAM, you better load a lot more into that RAM. So here I have a very large doc file. So this is 860 pages. So it is massive. And it did take a good, and I'm not joking here, about three minutes to load in. Was very slow. And the initial load, once it gets going, you can see scrollings a little slow. You can do your typical edits and move things around, cut and paste. That performance, however, doesn't seem to be affected too much. So it's not, not going to drive you wild being real laggy and slow with a large doc file like this. Now the same goes with Excel. Now this is not a huge spreadsheet. It handles spreadsheets a lot better, but this is only 10,000 lines, I think. So again, yeah, a little slow. It's not going to perform like the latest generation Core i5. Of course not. You can't expect that from this kind of CPU, but all in all, this performance is good. I will open up a high bitrate file. This is HEVC, the codec, and I'll play this uh, with VLC. So that pops up really quick. Even at this high bitrate, that is gonna be fine. Uh, the same goes for 4K. So ever since the Apollo Lake, we've had native decoding of VP9 codecs and HEVC. So performance there is as expected. Overall, it feels quite quick and snappy. Now you can see there's that animation starter, that lag, that's something that's been around on this chipset for a while. Now it's a bit quicker. But I just wanted to run through a few benchmarks. So I benchmarked the NVIDIA MX150. It is the 15, not the 10 watt version, sorry. This is 25 watts. So it's not the crippled version of this GPU. So we get 444 open CL score, 1000. And that isn't with the overclock. So what I did is I'd added an additional 200 megahertz to the core clock of this GPU and an extra 1000 to the RAM. Because in my experience with these lower end GPUs, you can normally overclock them quite a bit, not like the high end stuff. And that gives us a result of almost 50,000 then in OpenCL, which is very good for the particular GPU and considering the CPU we have. Now, if you were to force it onto the integrated, which is Intel's UHD 600, you can see that score is way less. Look at the difference there. So quite an increase going from the integrated graphics to the dedicated GPU, as expected. And then we take a look now at Geekbench 4. So these scores, yeah, they are very low. But for this hardware compared to the other laptops I've tested out, like the Lapbook SE from Chewy, similar results here. Maybe a little fast on the single core score because this is actively cooled, not passive like the other ones. Fire Strike from 3D Mark says so it's a very demanding test for that GPU. Not an amazing score, but with the overclock, you do gain 15%, just over 15%, which is really nice. I also did benchmark the SSD on here, so it's a light on branded one, 256 gigabytes, SATA 3 spec, really good speeds. For a SATA 3 drive, this is perfectly fine. It's not going to cause any bottlenecks here. So just how is this keyboard? Well, the layout of it is fine. I do like the spacing they have used. The texture of the keys feels good. The plastic they have used. 
uh, 1.5 millimeters of travel approximately. There's a little bit of flex there you can see and perhaps a little bit of bounce when you're typing, but overall it is a good keyboard. It's just not a premium one. It's not as good as the one, for example, in the Mi Notebook Pro or even in my Chewy Lapbook SE. The touchpad has a smooth plastic finish to it. It supports Windows gestures and it is a Windows precision touchpad. Uh, my days using it, I find it to be average. It's fine, it's certainly not the best I've used. I've used a lot worse as well. This laptop will stream 4K video just fine, but I wanted to focus here on the audio, which is truly and utterly disappointing so bad. The speakers, they have no volume to them. I'll give you a sample of them now. So as you could hear from that, that they lack a huge amount of volume. The 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is much louder. It's got very clean sound. There's no static, there's no interference. However, it's still not as loud as it should be. So very disappointing audio on this laptop. I even went as far as to edit some 4K footage here in Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is very demanding for the CPU. That if you have a look now at the preview, if I play this now, you can see it's running in real time, but that's only rendering it at uh, half the resolution. When you skip ahead and various different edits, it does really start to bog down. Now, 1080p video editing, it will run a hell of a lot better than 4K because remember, this is a very low end chipset. Export times as well, super slow. It's gonna take more than double the length of your clip at 4K to encode it, even though it is hardware accelerated using the CUDA cores and Intel's uh, Quick Sync. And a very quick peek at Linux. This is Linux Mint that it's running and there's no issues to report whatsoever. Everything seems to be working. That includes your Bluetooth, your wireless, everything like that. And you can of course install it as well. So you could set this up as a dual boot machine. Now there is one thing, if you follow me on Twitter, that you've probably seen me mention is this. This is driving me almost insane that whatever I try, all those different methods, the custom INF files, the config files, I cannot upgrade the graphics driver on this. It just will not happen. For some reason, it seems to be, when you have a look at the device ID, that's fine. Uh, it is the 25 watt, as mentioned, TDP NVIDIA MX150, but it's like a generic VGA device. It's something's wrong with it there that I just cannot upgrade the drivers on this. So this is gonna be an issue, especially with some games. So this title here is GTA. I've got it running on the lowest settings. It's 1080p and it's playable. I mean, if you want a faster frame rate than what I'm about to show you, then you could probably run it at 720p, but this is looking okay. I mean, it's not amazing performance, but there's no way that just that Sauron N4100 by itself would be able to run this game. So we're getting about 34 frames per second, 32. But as long as it keeps over 30, yes, that's some really bad driving from me. It is fine. So I've stepped it up now to a more demanding game. This is Witcher 3 low settings preset, 720p, over 40 frames per second. This is actually a lot better than I expected. I thought this one would definitely bring things coming down to a halt under 20 frames per second. Now I did try it in 1080p, but it's not recommended. 1080p I was getting a maximum frame rate of only about 35, and it was hovering around 29, 30 frames per second on average total, so to me that wasn't really good enough. So I'll just upset the guards here to see if that's gonna cause a huge frame dip or not. Okay. Not really, so this one's gonna be, yeah, 100% playable, 720p, low settings. So this title here is Call of Duty World War II. And it's hovering around 40 frames per second, but when there's a lot of action going on screen, when there's explosions and you're in those cutscenes, it drops down to about 25 frames per second. So it's uh, it's semi-playable, this one here. You do see a lot of screen tearing and whatnot. Even on the low setting, 720p, I can't really lower it much further. I mean, you can lower the resolution down, but it doesn't make much of a difference. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without showing you Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is on 1080p resolution. 
medium settings. Now you can lower the resolution and it will give you a better frame rate. And you can just want to show you too that in the smoke there you can see it dips down to 40. So this is, yeah, playable, but 720p will run a little bit better. So let's have a look at those temperatures now, which is important. So maximum temperatures on the CPU, 83 degrees. It doesn't tend to exceed this. I haven't seen it go over that, and that is almost after three hours. And if we take a look at the GPU, that is 77 degrees. And the fan noise is actually quite low. It's very hard for me to capture a sample, but not very loud, this laptop. Taking a look at the external temps here, so it does get up to about 37 degrees Celsius, just along the top right there, we can see the red dot where the laser is. And overall, those temperatures are fine. They're nothing like the more powerful laptops I've looked at that have reached up and over 48 degrees Celsius. So very hot to the touch. This one's just warm to the touch. So this webcam in a very awkward position that kind of looks up your nose isn't the greatest quality. It's HD. Either side of it, we do have dual array microphones and there is a status LED to let you know it's on. So here's a sample from the webcam. The mic's either side of it, as I pointed out. And when you type on the keyboard, you don't get as much feedback through those microphones of that as you do in ones that are placed on the laptop itself. Overall, this quality is very average. The mics as well. And the webcam location is not the greatest, looking up your nose, having it right down there. It should be up in the top bezel. Okay, so just gonna recap here as I do at the end of my video. So we've got plastic palm rests, aluminum on the top, aluminum or aluminum on the bottom. It is cooled by a fan. The fan noise is not bad. There's a bit of heat from it, but not a problem. It gets up to about 83 degrees, so that is fine there. The screen is nothing amazing. Yes, it has the slimmer bezels, which make it look a little bit more modern, a little bit nice looking there. I'll just turn that screen on for you so you can see it there. But the low brightness, okay, it's saving grace probably because it is matte coated, means that indoors it looks fine, but 100 lux is just not bright enough. And then if you're going to be color grading photos and things like that, the color gamut, the coverage we're getting from the screen, not good. I mean, I kind of expected that because this is a cheaper Chinese uh, laptop here. So the big problem that I had was the drivers. I still cannot install NVIDIA's latest drivers on this. I don't know why. I tried everything you can think of. I got some help from other people on Twitter as well. So installing in safe mode and using that driver uninstall utility, get rid of all the drivers. Then I did a fresh install, went offline. I tried to stop Windows from automatically installing its own driver, which kept happening a lot too. I was ripping my hair out after almost a whole day actually a day and a half, two days, messing with that, I got fed up and just almost went insane. I was gonna throw this thing out the window. So you cannot update, at least I can't update the graphics driver on this, which is gonna be an issue for gaming. So gaming performance, as you saw, is surprisingly good. It's not a high-end system, such a weak CPU. It does limit it with some games, but there were a lot of titles there on 1080p, low settings, playable frame rate, so that's good. So this is kind of what this thing is about. Uh, the touchpad, the keyboard, it's good to type on. It uh, overall has an average build quality. But for the price, the $599 that it cost me, well, no, because I feel you're better off saving an extra 200 US and getting something like Xiaomi's Mi Laptop Pro. That one there is often on sale for $799 or even a little bit lower than that. And it's got just so much better performance. Uh, premium build to it, backlit keyboard. This isn't backlit. I wrote just a better experience here, really. So battery life, it'll go for seven or eight hours, which is good. That's on par with other Sauron in 4100s that I've looked at. The Gemini Lake is good on batteries, so that's probably one of the positives on, of this. So really, need to factor that in. If you can pick it up maybe for a lot cheaper than possibly, but then you probably find something with an AMD APU, that will go a lot better, run a lot better than this, have better performance. But the performance did surprise me with the extra RAM, with the upgradeability, that's a big positive of this. It did run great, a lot better. In fact, the best N4100 that I have reviewed. Thanks so much for watching this video and I do hope to see you back in the channel soon. Bye for now.